Ha, cool. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Pure Battle channel. If you guys don't already know, my name is Jason. I'm so glad you guys are watching this this little episode. Uh, we are continuing with our everyday how to use Pokemon series. This is uh, this is amazing, dude. I'm blown away by how I'm I'm I should say I'm humbled by how great some of the Pokemon I'm catching with you guys are turning out. I've been battling with them. Um, the Zoro arc was meh. The Mighty Anna, which I thought was going to be awesome, was also pretty meh. The Lev Levani, or whatever it's called, was freaking phenomenal, guys. Those of you who already have me on your friends list, you guys have seen me battling with it. Sticky Web is amazing. Um, Leaf Blade is amazing. The critical hit ratio is amazing. The Swarm ability with X Scissor is amazing. It's an amazing Pokemon. What can I tell you guys? Anyways, uh, I just uploaded a video not too long ago, guys. You guys will see it really soon. I completed the Pokedex, got the Shiny Charm, got the Oval Charm. And I got a couple of diplomas for completing the Pokédex, the National, and the Hoenn Dex. So, what I want to start doing, guys, is a little bit of shiny hunting. I just want to get my feet wet a little bit. I'm not promising you guys we're going to do it. I just, you know, we're going to try it. Anyways, but this series, however, which I love, um, I'm going to continue to do this, guys, with you. This is a giveaway. Before I say anything else about Stoutland, this is a giveaway. You guys can watch the last video where I caught him with a Volcanion. Uh, we caught him off Route 101. I have the Hidden Ability one and the Normal one. And I had no idea what I was going to do with him. But today, I have mapped out a a total lifetime plan for what I want this Pokemon to do in battle. How I'm going to use it. And I think it's going to be pretty freaking amazing. If you guys take a look with me right here. The first page I went in and opened up was Smogon. Um, you know, I'm just looking at their stuff. I don't really like Smogon or use any of their builds. Um... But I'd like to look at it periodically, and I do like their damage calculator. Uh, just, you know, if you don't know what Smogon is, it's pretty competitive, and they teach you some stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, you get at a certain level, though, and you just stop using Smogon because it's not, it's like irrelevant. You know, once you know how to battle, you don't need anyone to tell you how to battle. Or So, you know, anyways. <clears throat> Statland, when it is fully evolved, it has the abilities Intimidate, Sand Rush, and Scrappy. First thing I want to tell you guys is that all these abilities are amazing. And I, I always say this, not all Pokemon are created equally. However, this Stoutland, uh, it has access to... There's so many ways you can use this Stoutland. The thing that I really like, what well, the first thing I see when I look at a Stoutland, the first thing that stands out is his the, the way his stats are spread out. I think it's phenomenal that he only has 45 special attack. That is freaking awesome. Now, he only has 500 base stats, he or she, has 500 base stats, which are, you know, they're not phenomenal or anything. But, the way that these stats are spread out, makes Stoutland, he's bulky, he hits hard, and he doesn't waste any stats. He doesn't, he, his spread isn't like wasted on special attack. This makes him very usable. Uh, I think he's going to be extremely awesome. I haven't battled with him yet, guys, but if those of you who are my friends, subscribers, people who, uh, you know, take part in all of my giveaways, you guys know that we're going to be seeing a lot of this in the next couple of weeks. Um, his HP is an 85, excuse me, 85 base HP. Uh, base attack is 110. It's pretty impressive, guys. Defense is base 90, which is also pretty impressive for a you know, pretty underpowered Pokemon. That's very impressive. 90 base defense. A uh, special, de uh, special attack is only 45. Awesome. Good job, Game Freak. I like it. If we can give him Mega, drop it some more and spread his... This is awesome. This is extremely freaking awesome. Special defense at base 90, which is also really pretty impressive, guys. This, These are impressive stats, okay? Speed at base 80. So... The next question is, what am I going to do with this? We caught a lily pup. I evolved it into Herdier, and then I evolved that Herdier into a Stoutland. And I have every single ability. I'm going to talk to you guys about these abilities right now, though. Let's start with the first one, Intimidate. A phenomenal ability, guys. If you have a physically defensive team that you want to wall a bunch of physical threats, you can, throw, you can give this guy Intimidate, give him some HP, some defense, give him some wall-breaking moves. Like, um, you could give him Toxic, Taunt, you can give him Facade for when he gets status moves. You can break walls with this. Blissey, uh, Chan Chansey, of course, that Ghost, whatever that Ghost is called, I can't remember his name. 
Um, all the ghosts, all of them, man. All the ones that try to stall, wall you. Um, what's his name? Dustclops. Thank you. Dustclops. <clears throat> With, uh, oh, Sableye, if you are rocking a taunt on this Stoutland, you can have your Intimidate be extremely bulky. Taunt any wall that your opponent comes up with, force them to switch, and hit him with the Toxic, hit him with the Intimidate, switch, be really tricky. You know, it it, it it makes for a really great Pokemon. The problem is that Intimidate on this Pokemon, it the reason it's not great is be, what makes other Intimidate users outclass him? Let me ask that question. Intimidate, you have um, Manatrike. He resists flying moves, so you can come in, use your Intimidate on a Talonflame. You can resist it and drop his attack, even if he's holding a Choice Band, and you're going to Revenge Kill him. Um, Mega Salamence, come in, you're Electric, you resist his Double Edge, you can one-hit KO him because you're faster with your Hidden Power Ice. That's what makes him stand. Now, Gyarados, um, Scissor wants to use Bullet Punch. You know he's going to use Bullet Punch, or... Let's say superpower, okay? Switch in your Gyarados. He resists fighting moves. He resists steel moves. He's immune to ground moves. And he has Intimidate. This is what makes those Intimidate users stand out, guys. That is why Stoutland is outclassed as an Intimidate user. And although it's pretty awesome, guys, if you have a team that you want a physical wall, a bunch of physical walls, you know, it'd be really troll about physical attackers, you can definitely run this Stoutland like that. I won't be mad at you. I might even be impressed. It's doable. But he is outclassed. Um, let's go to Sandrush. Sandrush, I, I just I've been reading on this guys. Sandrush doubles the speed of the ability bearer in the sandstorm. Double. This dude has 80 base speed. Pretty impressive, guys. Uh, faster than Tyranitar. I think it's faster than um, I can't remember its name, dude. That other awesome sweeping thing. Uh, it's steel and fire. I can't remember his name. You guys will think of it later. Um, anyways, he's pretty fast. Put him in the sandstorm, guys, and it doubles his speed. I think his speed will go up to like close to like 280 or something. I, I might be wrong, but basically doubling his speed, his speed could go up to 500. Matter of fact, I have it right over here. There's no point in guessing if I have it right in front of me. Check this out, guys. If you have a Jolly Stoutland in the sandstorm. He has the potential to reach 200, is that 284? 284 speed stat at level 100. So if you're at level 100 and you're jolly, <clears throat> your speed can go to 568. That's faster than anything. Faster than Deoxy's speed, faster than Mega Alakazam, faster than anything that doesn't have a priority move. You're going to be extremely fast, guys. Extremely freaking fast. The only thing that can stand on your way is probably someone else using Sand Rush. Um, so basically, someone who's faster using Sand Rush is the only thing that's going to be able to outspeed you, really. So if you're in the Sandstorm, guys, you, you don't even need to be Jolly. You're going to be so fast, you can go Adamant. You can go Adamant and safely just give yourself more speed than, let's say, Mega Aerodactyl. Give yourself more speed than Mega Aerodactyl and Mega Mana Trike. Um... Put the rest in physical defense. Definitely go adamant and give yourself full attack. Uh, and put the rest of your EVs somewhere else, you know. you'll Now you'll be bulkier. You'll still hit like a truck. And you'll be faster than everyone in the game except the people using... Um, not Scarf. You're still faster than Scarf users. You're faster than every Scarf user. That's guaranteed, guys. Unless they have Sand Rush and they're holding a Scarf and it's in a Sandstorm. But you're faster than all Scarf users. I, I promise you guys. You're faster than every Scarf user. Um, wow, priority moves. <laughs> Brain farted right there, guys. The only thing that can outspeed you is priority moves. But since you're giving yourself that bulk and a lot of priority moves aren't very powerful, you're going to survive, guys. Give yourself enough EVs in defense to survive an extreme speed from a Dragonite, and you will revenge kill, and you will be fast. He has to use extreme speed, or you're going to kill him. And since you have 90 base defense and 85 base HP, guys, you're, you're going to be in a really good position. A really, really good position to eat up some of those hits and get a ton of revenge kills. I can guarantee you that only a fighting type Pokemon or someone with like a bunch of at stat increases. Basically, they have to have a stab fighting move and stat increases to kill you with a one hit KO, guys. Because you do have enough bulk 
I can guarantee you that anything that is not super effective, it will be at least a 2-hit KO, probably a 3-hit KO. So, Sand Rush, guys, amazing. You're going to be faster than everything on the field. Off a of base 110 attack with a stab, let's say, return, you're going to do massive damage. Stab double edge, massive damage, but you're going to take recoil. Um, I'm going to go for a stab facade because if they try to burn me, I want to still be able to do something with my herdier. So, a uh, base 140, no, no, excuse me, a base 110 physical attack. With a move that has 140 power, facade with a burn or paralyze, whatever. Um, and stab, I'm going to do some freaking amazing damage. I can go for a life orb. I can go for a choice band. I don't need a choice scarf. I can go for the expert belt. Guys, Herdier is going to do some massive freaking damage and be extremely fast with Sand Rush. Let's look at his last ability, uh, Scrappy Ability. Gives normal and fighting type moves of the ability bearer the ability to hit ghost type Pokemon. So you're going to start hitting ghosts with that facade, double edge, whatever you decide to use. Uh, superpower, you're going to be able to hit the ghost now, from now on. Let's talk about, like, who, who are some prominent ghosts? Aegislash, okay? If you give this dude superpower, hit an Aegislash in the face with it, <laughs> Aegislash is going down every time, and you're faster than Aegislash. And if you guys are as good battlers as I think you are, you know how annoying Aegislash can be. Hit him with a super effective 120 base power superpower. It's a wrap. Especially if you think you're going to switch or the F or you know, there's ways you can trick your opponent. So, a great move to take down those ghosts. And your stab normal moves are going to do some pretty huge damage, guys. Pretty freaking phenomenal damage. So, watch out for that. Let's go look at what else is there here? Let's look at some of the moves that Smogon has, dude. Kyle, let's see. This one says Scrappy Wall Breaker. This is interesting. Uh, this one has Return, Super Power, Facade. Very nice. Pursuit, or the, the last move, is either Pursuit, Toxic, or Play Rough. I wouldn't go that way, guys. But one thing I do like about this build is that it's holding a Silk Scarf. Six Silk Scarf gives you a 50% increase in normal type moves. So now you have Stab, and it's like you're holding a Choice Band when you use normal moves. So, 50% uh, increase from Silk Scarf, 50% increase from Stab, and 140 base power from Facade. You're going to beat the shit out of anything that gets in front of you guys. And you're still going to be able to switch your moves. You're going to be switching to your Super Power. You're going to be able to switch into Return. You guys following me with this one? The, the Silk Scarf is a good thing. This one's adamant, pretty awesome. I don't like the ability. But it would have full speed, full attack, and a little bit of special... Oh, no, no. Speed? Yeah, and a little bit of special defense. Pretty cool. Um, it says here that he is checked by... Oh, Sand Sweeper. That's pretty cool also. Sand Rush, Adamant, Choice Band, Life Orb. See, it sounds legit. I would probably go that way. But I would still go Silk Scarf instead of Choice Band because being locked into moves is not cool. <clears throat> Another thing I forgot to tell you guys. When you do have the Sand Rush ability, you're a normal type. And you would take damage from the Sandstorm. But since you have the Sand Rush ability, not only are you going to double your speed. Oh, I love saying that, man. You're going to have a freaking phenomenal speed stat. But also, you're not going to take damage from the Sand Rush. Or Sandstorm. So, when you hit your opponents, you have to remember that that Sandstorm that they're taking, that damage, which is one eighth every turn of their full HP. That damage that they're taking, guys, it's going to put you... It, no, excuse me. It's going to put them within one hit KO range of your Herdier. So all this little bit of math adds up. <clears throat> Everybody knows the feeling, man. That annoying, annoying feeling when your opponent survives with one HP and he's too fast for you and all the Pokemon that could have killed him got wiped out. So he sweeps you with that shit. The Sandstorm will ensure that that never happens. No more Focus Sashes. No more surviving with one HP. The Sandstorm is going to take care of those problems for you every single time, guys. And like I said, you're getting Stab and Silk Scarf on your facade and your, I don't know, let's say Burnt or Poisoned or something. You're going to beat the shit out of your opponent every single time. Also, if you're worried about status, you can give yourself Rest so you don't catch Burns. Um, you can go like Rest, Facade, Sleep Talk, and... I don't know what crunch. I guess you could do crunch. 
I would probably pick a fighting move because I really want to just beat the shit out of everything in front of me. Anyways, guys, uh, that's all I have on Stoutland right now. But I'm telling you guys, look at the stats, the way that these stats are spread. Dude. This Pokemon is going to be freaking phenomenal. Again, this is a giveaway. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and email me uh, your friend code. And I'll email you. Or you guys, mine is in the description. Excuse me. You guys can add me. You can get a Stoutland. I do do this every day. These are This is a two-part series. Uh, one day I catch it. And w part of the series, guys, if I didn't tell you already, part of the series is I'm going to try to catch them shiny also. So I'm going to try to catch them shiny, uh, breed them with as many IVs as possible, make them battle ready, EV train them, and give them back to my faithful, faithful subscribers. I love you guys, man. And uh, I think, what else can I say about Stoutland? It's amazing. You guys are going to love it, man. And, this, and if this gets you all to battle more often, it makes me happy too. My, my life, you just improve the quality of my life if you battle with my Pokemons.